Hey guys, this is Craig at Area 419. I want to talk you through a conversation that I have on a very regular basis, and it is what kind of rifle do I need as my first custom gun I'm getting into PRS. Uh, before I get into this, I'll let you know there's always more money you can spend. There are nice things you can buy that are extra. There's gear, there's tchotchkes, there's add-ons, or there are more expensive alternatives to some of the components I'm going to show you here. But when a guy calls and says, I'm kind of getting into this. I had a Bergara HMR or a or a, a Tika that I liked and I shot well, but I want to do the custom thing, what should I do? If a guy's unsure enough that he's asking me that question, this is basically the rifle that I'm going to build for him. Um, and I'll give you kind of component to component. I'm going to start with the caliber. That's always the first question. I suggest that a guy, if he's not shot a lot of matches, let's build a 6.5 Creedmoor. Two reasons for that. One, your barrel's going to last longer. There's good factory avail availability in other ammos too, like a 6 Creedmoor. But in a 6.5 Creedmoor, you're going to get more barrel life. I often tell a guy, get a 6.5 Creedmoor, shoot the barrel out of it. After you've shot that 2,500 rounds, you've got a lot through that rifle. Then let's move into something like a 6. Um, you're going to have better marks. You're going to have better fundamentals built up. You're going to have be more comfortable behind the gun. You're going to have some more time on the range figuring out what's really important to you in that, in that mix of super performance versus ease of shooting versus barrel life, you know, there's a lot to get into with, with all of the sixes. So I like you guys to start with a 6.5 Creedmoor, typically a, tw a 26 inch M24 barrel, uh, because that's where a lot of the balance comes from in the gun. I also like them to start with, I suggest often the Defiance Tenacity, we nitride them, uh, they're very smooth, they're very durable, they're ultimately capable, I and mean, there's, there's nothing more meaningfully capable about any other action in the game. Uh, and at the point that a guy might say, I like this tenacity, but I want to move up to a, a deviant or a vector or an impact or whatever they want to do, this tenacity is still going to resell very well. So you, so you have something that's good long term. I also like suggesting to guys that for their first custom build, they look at an MPA. Um, I'm a manners guy personally. I love my T2A gap. It feels wonderful to me. But with a manners or a McMillan or the other molded composite stocks, you need to kind of know what you want because they're not super adjustable. You know, your, your length of pull, you might play with a little bit on something like a chassis or, you know, the way the, the way the foreign sits. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you're going to learn about what you like with an MPA. They could then translate to, I want to buy a Manners or a McMillan. I want to stay in an MPA forever because it's a wonderfully capable system. I want to look at the, uh, the MDT ACC or something along those lines. I like suggesting the MPA first. It fits everything, feels good. They're very well made, they're widely available, they have good resale. It's typically what I suggest to a guy that doesn't know what he wants. I also like telling guys to be unafraid of that $1,000 to $1,200 class optic. This is a PST Gen 2 from Vortex. I also like the Night Force SHV. I like the, uh, the Bushnell class in there, like that DMR Pro or the DMR2, uh, or you can even find some of the older XRSs in that $1,000 to $1,200 range. And all of them are very capable. They track, re they track well. They're durable. You've got good reticles. You've got good magnification ranges. They're companies that if you have problems, you can call them, or you might also just bump into them in a match. You'll see Nick from Vortex, or Sean from Night Force, or the Bushnell crew. I, I see them a lot in the Midwest. Uh, I, I like that class of optics. So what you're looking at here, you know, you, you put a good break on your gun, buy a nice bipod. Uh, we're obviously, uh, you know, partial to the Sidewinder and Hellfire. We think they're the best that are out there. Um, the Atlas Cal, I think, is a great new offering from BNT. I'm also not opposed to a guy working with a Harris. I've shot a lot of matches with a Harris and like them quite a bit. Triggers, there are a lot of things out there. We stock a lot of Trigger Tech. Uh, they've got the special that, depending on the model, you can find it in that mid-100 range. We've got some of the Independence Days left for 140, or the, uh, the special typically runs 180, where you can get into their diamond in that 250, 270, 290 range, depending on left, right orientation and shoe. All in, you're looking at this, the rifle itself before optic, you're in that $33 to $3,500 range, depending on some of your options. This optic setup, you might be at, as it sits here, with rings, $11, $12, $1,300. So you can be in this gun at $5,000. Um, it's something that is going to be adjustable. It's versatile. It can grow with you. It has resale if you decide that you're you're not really going to be that into PRS or you're way into it and you want to go all out and build something that's all the way at the top of the spectrum. This is basically the rifle I suggest. So if you don't know what you want, you want to get into PRS, you want to build something a little bit more serious, 
first of all, give us a call. I like hearing a little bit about what every person's preferences are before making a suggestion. But if you truly have no idea, um, I'm probably going to suggest you use something fairly similar to this. So thanks for watching, guys. If you've got any questions or there's something else that you're wondering about building a first rifle, want to know what I suggest if you're going to do this, that, or the other thing, let us know. Drop a link, drop a question in the comments, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.